In this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at the aging face. We'll start by dividing facial aging into two categories, superficial and deep. Let's start with discussing superficial aging. Superficial aging has to do with the skin surface, such as skin texture and tone, appearance of pore size, and how smooth our skin appears overall. Here we have our skin layers. When we're young, our skin surface is composed of newer skin cells, but as we age, we accumulate more dead skin cells to the surface. As we get older, our skin cells don't turn over as rapidly, which is why our complexion gets more dull and less even toned. The right kinds of topicals and procedures like chemical peels, retinoids, retinols, and non-topicals like lasers and microneedling can be helpful because they can help increase cell turnover and exfoliate these older cells, making the superficial skin texture smoother, more even toned, and renewed. In addition to your change in skin texture, depending on your skin type, you can develop pigmentary changes to the skin, such as sunspots, also called lentigines, melasma, and a more uneven skin complexion. Take this woman for instance. She is devoid of wrinkles and her skin is completely radiant and smooth. She has no signs of sun damage, but you can tell that she's probably around her late 40s or 50s. That's because as we age, there are other things that happen on a deeper level. Let's travel below the skin surface to discover how we age. There are three main things that we lose with time that significantly contribute to aging. Starting from the deepest level, working our way up to the superficial level, it's bone, fat pads, and collagen and elastin within the skin. Let's first begin by discussing what happens to our facial bones. Our bones are continuously being broken down and remodeled. When we're young, we're forming new bone faster than we're breaking down bone. But as we age, our bones get less dense with time because we're now breaking down bone at a faster rate than we're making new bone. Within the past decade, with the use of three-dimensional CAT scan analysis, we have a more accurate understanding of bone loss to the facial skeleton. We have learned that aging of the facial skeleton includes selective resorption, or the breaking down of bone at specific sites. Let's examine this picture. The highlighted areas to the left in the red show the areas with the greatest amount of bone loss, and on the right is the corresponding area of soft tissue in which that bone helps to support. If we examine this, we'll see that bone loss occurs mainly around the eyes, known as the periorbital area, which is the area indicated by the arrows. Bone loss in the maxillary area here causes receding, which contributes to deepening of the nasolabial fold or smile line, and to loss of support to the upper lip. The area to the base of the nose, known as the piriform area, also recedes and deepens with age, and reduced skeletal support in this area contributes to a downward tip rotation of the nose as we get older. Jaw length decreases significantly, especially in women. This contributes to loss of definition of the lower border of the face and less support to anchor the soft tissue, which is why we can get jowly. Now let's take a look at our facial fat compartments and how they contribute to aging. Our fat compartments are divided into superficial and deep. They help provide us with volume and fullness. Young faces are like one facial unit or compartment, properly padded with facial fat in all the right places. As we age, these fat pads deflate, leading to the loss of support and the descent of soft tissue. Of particular significance is the malar fat pad because it contributes significantly to aging in the mid-face. Loss of this fat pad contributes to separation of the lower eyelid cheek junction and descent of the mid-cheek. Loss of our fat pads is also a major factor in the development of deep laugh lines or nasolabial folds. With time, our fat pads deflate more and more and the soft tissue descends and we develop more compartments to the face. Now let's discuss collagen and elastin. Collagen is the most abundant protein found in the body. Accounting for around 30% of whole body protein, it's the main component in connective tissue, such as cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and blood vessels. Composed of very strong fibers, collagen is responsible for giving the skin its strength and rigidity. Elastin is also a protein found in our skin and connective tissue that accounts for the elasticity of structures in the skin, blood vessels, tendons, ligaments, and more. It is less abundant than collagen, but elastin gives the skin its elastic property, 
allowing it to coil and recoil back to its original shape after being stretched. Together, collagen and elastin are two key proteins that give the skin its strength, elasticity, and shape. When we're younger, our skin has more abundant and healthier collagen and elastin, which helps to keep the skin smooth and taut. As we age, we lose these structures, which contribute to loss of elasticity in the skin and formation of wrinkles. Our skin caves in more and is probably most apparent with facial expression to the areas around the mouth, like our nasolabial folds or smile lines, oral commissures, and marionette lines. When we're young, we have an abundance of these key structures that contribute to keeping the skin and soft tissue being taut, firm, and outwardly projected. We can't really do much about losing these structures as it's what happens with age, but we can help restore projection from the loss of bone and fat pads with fillers and collagen stimulators that are injected at a deeper level. Dermal fillers and collagen stimulators can also help take up the space left by the loss of these structures, thus adding volume back into the soft tissue and giving it support.